Hello there. This is Jesse Coffee. I feel as though I am obligated to preempt my uh, Sunday filler episode for the week because I want to address my behavior the past decade a year, which incidents that occurred in my life this week have prompted me to discuss. And these all involve incidents in which I indulged in behavior that I thought I had been above, but turned out not to be. And the date range of these incidents spans from roughly the summer of 2011 uh, to this week, and it's split into several parts. I'm gonna get on the first one. Uh, I was one of the youngest people to ever use a YouTube account. I signed up for my first one, uh, Jesse Lee 112, uh, close to my 10th birthday. In, 20, in 2009, when I was about to turn 11, I created another account, Jesse Lee 85719. And then came February 4th, I think, 2011. The day when I closed my account and then had a tough time logging back into it. And then I decided to create a new one, Jesse LA 5719. And um, then I created an outlandish and, as I came to later greet it, unfounded uh, charge. Um, and I borrowed that charge from um, the fact that. Um, a user by the name of Film 17 Forever, who is uh, mostly inactive now, had his account hacked into by a uh, raffle counter and closed. And uh, the charge was that a user named the 2.71 had hacked into my old account and closed it, and thus was not in good standing. I got a bunch of other people to swallow it up, uh, most notably uh, Josh Markey, uh, who wrote me into co-running something called the Anti-Troll Club. Uh, of course, I got into an actual incident of having an account hacked into and rendered unusable years later, but that was on Discord. Um, and anyway, uh, during that part of the 2010s, I had settled into a particularly toxic version of the stereotypical 1990s kid motif. Uh, stealing videos primarily without attribution, and also using the upload channel to upload videos where I acted like an ass to quite a few people online, uh, especially anyone who was a fan of artists who were tops on the then current pop charts, namely Justin Bieber, and fans of cartoons that were popular at the time and still popular today. Uh, Phineas and Ferb, uh, The Amazing World of Gumball, and perhaps most infamously, Invader Zim. Uh, my acidic attitude toward fans of these particular cartoons was in part fueled by a loyalty, uh, read unhealthy obsession, I developed with Knuckles the Echidna 64. Uh, he was only three to four years younger than I was at the time, and uh, I often borrowed his and other videos. Uh, well, not <laughs> the technical word would be soul. Uh, his and other videos using the YouTube video editor that launched around this time and which disappeared in 2017. Uh, in the comments sections of his videos on these shows, I frequently went into the comments sections, then turned my initial uh, defense of what I thought was his right to be on YouTube to just being a total jerk to our fans of the shows he ripped up the art, printed out artwork for. Now, I can't go into too much detail into that now. You can see examples of that on the videos if you click on them today. But that was not a good memory to have in a bank. But things got even worse in July and August of 2013. I had gotten into the Sonic uh, Sprite community around that time and found nine parts of a vehicle for Silver the Hedgehog, I think it was, that I wanted to post on YouTube in full. And they came from a woman by the name of Bullet the Mouse who denied the request. Um, I made several subsequent demands to re-upload her video, most of which were in horrible faith and a lot of which had their own unique ways of being toxic. Uh, a surviving one on that account, um, in the form of 
uh, surviving one is on that account in the form of response to bull in the mouse. If you see response to several response to Jesse Coffee videos on YouTube today, they largely stem from that. Uh, and uh, anyway, that took a huge toll on my mental brain capacity online, and I remain very much ashamed of the way I acted when I was in the Sonic Sprite community to this day. Uh, this era, to be fair, did have its positives. Uh, in that time, I developed interests in VHS and DVD collecting, all broadcasts from radio and mostly television, alternate universes, films, film and other media criticism, old print media, and from November 2013 onward, music. All of which I retain today. And I also morphed my political views over time, going from a not particularly political guy who used things like gay and autistic as insults and had really nasty things to say about Morocco, to being a full-blown progressive since February 2014. This is a change I particularly credit Tom Hartman and the now merely archive holding Access Tucson for. And I also started to be out and about on a regular basis from the fall of 2014 onward, uh, mainly with a Parapro in tow. Um, uh, the months between uh, February 2014 and April 2015 were ones in which I became a full-blown brony and developed another thing I retain today, a uh, deep love and massive interest in the career of Weird Al Yankovic. Uh, they were, you might say, a pretty chill time in my life. Uh, irrational hatred directed at Bill Cosby's accusers when his case broke out notwithstanding. Uh, I launched a film fiction account and brought my own set of headcans with me to it, although I didn't know they were headcans at the time. Uh, in fact, it was hard to know what hand cannons were at the time, for me anyway. But I eventually figured it out. Um, anyway, unfortunately, that time was not to last. On April 18th, 2015, an episode of My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, aired called Bloom and Gloom. And at the start of that episode, a character on the series, uh, which I've been particularly obsessed, uh, Bab Seed, got her cutie mark. Uh, the cutie mark, a pair of scissors, uh, symbolized an apparent talent as a hairdresser. Uh, that I had one in my own family tree uh, made no difference in what was to follow. I was upset by this because I wanted her cutie mark and spe her special talent to be something in show business. and was so disappointed in the fact that... Um, uh, neither was the case, that on Fin Fiction, I attempted a series of campaigns to try and acquire the rights of Bab C from Hasbro. Uh, many of these campaigns were very ill-advised and all backfired spectacularly. And I also got into largely toxic and mean-spirited conversations with a lot of the people who had politics that were the opposite of mine. They were Trump and Fox News influenced, to be sure. Um, and a lot of them were of the obsessive anti-SJW variety. In May of 2016, I was kicked out of a group on film fiction for having developed behavior that made me unliked by a lot of the people in the group. And after that, a change erupted in me. As the 2016 election neared and it became clear that the race was between Trump and Clinton primarily, I began to uh, mellow slightly my expressions of political thought and I also began to mellow uh, considerably, uh, in my explanation, I thought on other topics. I also became more open minded and respectful of people's opinions uh, on media in particular, while at the same time also devoting quite a bit of my time to building my YouTube account, which initially would show video extensions of my VHS and vinyl update blogs for film fiction. And uh, I also began to have more fun creating blog posts that were. Basically, fictional albums by OCs of some of my friends on film fiction, or by characters of My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, assigned to various eras, and also to write a lot of songs that have yet to be recorded in real life. Uh, in early 2017, however, I made my second and third behavioral lapses. Uh, my second and third major ones. 
One of my friends there um, on Fin Fiction, Vanilla Molka, had gone on f to do a video series with her significant other, Icy. My initially lukewarm reviews on the video soon delved into personal attacks on her that uh, caused me to be bought by her and another of my friends there, Galaxy Nebula. And then in April, a woman named Random Mail blocked me because she had a problem with me casting her in an OC oriented adaptation of the Jazz Singer, which was retitled The Pop Singer for my purposes and never materialized. And also was trying to write uh, her own uh, fan fiction uh, regarding um, uh, that attempt, uh, which I tried to issue a cease and disorder on because uh, well, I feared that I felt that it was a. Uh, I had a pretty big ego <laughs> at the time. Uh, well, fairly big. Uh, well, it's always been uh, with me. Uh, well, in some degree. It's uh, mellowed out a little bit over the years. Uh, but anyway, on these two occasions, I had a considerable help in the healing of my relationships with them. Courtesy of a great person who's Username was Hope for the Few. He went in and helped rescue my kinships with them, and I'm probably still in good graces with many of the good friends I met on Fem Fiction, although I have not interacted with many of them in years. But during the ensuing summer, I began to regularly invest myself in the physical media community on YouTube and gain the uploading rights to VHS openings from Tyler Tristar to his back and poured myself into yet another obsession, uh, creating videographies and discographies. I returned to doing those from time to time. Um, and uh, I've been on and off a discographical project for Arista Records for many years. And I also began doing commentaries on calling out people who deserved it, uh, either for making extremely violent threats toward other people, uh, being serially acidic, <clears throat> as far as opinions uh, on various bits of p media and being horribly bigoted. I took a break from uh, fan fiction in October 2017 after I posted, deleted, and archived a number of threads calling out pro-monarchy genius for being acidic in his approach to the way uh, critics reacted to my Little Pony movie. I followed that time I will bit off uh, as though I bit off a bit more than I can chew there, but it turned out that pro-monarchy genius was just generally acidic. It is commentaries and reserves that cynicism for people who have a different opinion than he does on various issues. Uh, he's also no longer internet active on the internet. Uh, now, after that week long sabbatical from fan fiction, I began to shift uh, focus toward creating blog posts devoted to my comments on the world, film, music, uh, music, film presentations, and general entertainment. Uh, but this proved short-lived because of a series of computer breakdowns that occurred in December 2017. And by the time my computer was repaired uh, in early January 2018, I shifted toward a new obsession, The Loud House. I was particularly obsessed with the idea of having a spin-off uh, involving the family of one of its characters, Ronnie Ann, uh, predicting the October 2019 arrival of the Casa Grandes, uh, a great series which grew to hold its own heavy container of water against the Loud House in its three-season run, um, and particularly uh, and a, a container of water that grew as heavily as uh, uh, Season 5 of the Loud House degraded. Uh, it... <sighs> I believe that the third, all three seasons, yep, that's my belief, all three seasons of the Casa Grandes are better than the fifth season of The Loud House. <sighs> uh, much better, anyway. Uh, and I also devoted a great amount of time uh, to Facebook. Uh, anywho, and after I got suspended from that website, I went on to Twitter. I eventually developed a persona of being a generally chill person who tweets and writes about the news, politics, movies, cartoons, music, and other general interests, while continuing to call out those who I felt had engaged in unacceptable thoughts on matters involving race, sexuality, and uh, various other uh, factions of minority groups, as well as general cynicism toward other users. 
I won praise in 2020 on Twitter when I did multiple threads critical of Mr. Edder's approach to discussions of COVID-19, which, along with his review of the great Pixar film Turning Red, have effectively ended his history of being in good graces with the animation community at large. And I also came out as a pansexual in 2021 to a generally warm welcome. I've had a few incidents of minor personal relapses since 2017, but they were all relatively minor, and all were of the kind that usually got resolved within a 24-hour period. But this month, however, I had a major relapse in unwelcome behavior again. For the past few weeks, I have, on Twitter, made a series of sexually charged comments about other users and cartoon characters. Uh, I namely directed those comments at Anime and Antic, and at least 13 characters from the Loud House and the Casa Grandes, all of whom were adults, canonically, and in real life. These comments have made quite a number of people angry, scared, horrified, repulsed, and uncomfortable. And uh, three of my mutuals on Twitter, Alfred and WS, uh, Jemmy Bunny, and Brenham D, uh, have blocked me over the comments I mean in these posts. Another few people unfollowed me over them. And uh, a substantial portion of the day after I posted a Loud House related thread was spent reflecting on this kind of behavior, both when I was awake and when I was in my sleep. And details of my reflections can be seen in an open letter that I posted on Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube's community tab. I've tried reaching a number of people for advice on how to get out of these traps that lead to uh, the vicious cycle I've been talking about in this uh, audio-only video, uh, in which I relapse into uncomfortable behaviors every once in a while. Now, the best advice I have gotten on this front has come from a user named Bonafide, who... Had a little talk with his uh, mother and suggested from those talks to me that I take a less is more approach for a little while. And he wrote, everyone has those impulses, even me, but it's important to give yourself some time to think about whether or not it, could be po it should be posted or at least worded a certain way. He added that I was confident that I will avoid relapses and unacceptable behavior in the future, and that I will one day restore my friendships with Alfred and Jenna. Sometime after Christmas, I plan to talk with them uh, if I follow their Instagram accounts. Oh, actually, I follow one of them on Instagram. Uh, about my sincerest regret for making a types of post that may have scared to do any, to have anything to do with me. Now, hopefully, I can make amends with them and gain their forgiveness and acceptance. My apology. I'll also try to do everything in my power to try and prevent myself from ever engaging in behaviors of an unacceptable variety ever again. What happened this week was a teachable moment for me as far as proper conduct on the internet. I am confident that I will have learned plenty from that moment. I hope you... Uh, I, I wish to thank you for listening and at least having a good sense of understanding at hand. I'm Jesse Coffey.